and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to be discussing the um, McDonnell Miller Unimatch electric feeder uh, for the, uh, steam boilers. Uh, this has been on the market uh, one form or another for a very long time. It's uh, built around the um, S45 solenoid valve. Uh, there's the direction of flow. This is the uh, strainer cap. I've got a look on the inside and you can see the strainer there and the uh, flow restrictor at that end. Normally though you're probably going to be running into this already hooked up and you're going to have to figure out why it's not working. Um, it ran into one of these uh, the other day that uh, has been been in service for a while and wasn't feeding properly. Um, it wasn't uh, hooked up properly and also the uh, internals had uh, the internal valve had uh, calcified. So let's uh, take a look at what's inside. The cover comes off and you've got the solenoid coil there and uh, when it's pink it's 24 volts. Uh, if it was 120 volts it would be green and you would have a power transformer here at least on this generation. This is a um, second generation model. Um, you have a uh, push button manual feed and then you have a feed indicator. Requires three wires to hook up. Uh, you can try to do it with two, but it's usually not the best. You've got your hot there. You've got your neutral there. And if we were to jumper from here to here, our W connector, uh, and wait about a minute, this would trigger, but not going to worry about that now. So when it feeds, it um, gives you the indicator, but it does not give you any indication if it's getting a signal from the low water cutoff as to whether uh, it requires water. So as I said the other day, I was running into a situation that uh, even though I was pressing on the button here, nothing was flowing through. Um, the manual bypass worked, but the customer wanted it to be able to feed uh, water um, automatically. So... I had to figure out how to get into this thing. Um, they do not make it easy. Um, they really don't care once this is sold um, and installed. Uh, the uh, McDonald Miller wants to sell you a whole new one. Uh, they don't sell you any, any parts for this uh, whatsoever. Um, so you're kind of on your own. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, first thing, of course, is to shut off the water and uh, disconnect the electric. And you want to uh, pull the wires off the solenoid there. You want to gently push this LED so that can swing free. And at this end, on the uh, manual feed switch, I'm going to take off the uh, nut and push that in a little bit. And then you want to pull down very gently, wiggle the spade terminals out, and this can come out. Usually there's a spacer there. It's gone missing. Uh, set those aside. And now... I'm going to get a Phillips with a four or five inch long shaft. A four way won't do it. There's not enough clearance. You want to get, take that uh, screw off. I'm going to get down in there. Um, it's pretty tightly in on. You back out the screw and um, Back out the solenoid, being careful not to, to lose the screw. And you lift the uh, solenoid out. And 
are the uh, parameters on the solenoid. This is a uh, 8 32nd a Phillips head screw with a, uh, a lock washer. You want to make sure you don't lose that. And now you've got um, three uh, plastic hold down posts and you want to disengage the little uh, plastic tab one at a time. So here you can see there's a little triangular uh, tab. You want to push that in and push up gently on there and that holds that on. I'm going to swing this around so you can see it a little easier. Let's see if I push that in just a little bit and push up on the electrical and you got the one final one there and there are the there's the electrical uh, as I said this is second generation um, they do a nice job of potting it uh, this of course is uh, in a potentially wet environment and so it's good that they do that to uh, protect it from intermittent uh, dowsings which uh, might be hair to. As you can see the valve is still on the bracket the bracket uh, hold down bracket and the uh, supporting bracket are part of the same unit which is kind of clever this 832nd uh, screw comes out Make sure you don't lose it. And this is going to want to spring apart. And again, I want to make sure that the water is off. So you want to kind of hold that on there. Just this, uh, this has got a little spring behind it. And you don't want to lose it. So this is presumably still attached to the uh, plumbing. And you lift this off. And there's going to be a plunger, and more importantly, there's going to be a spring. And you do not want to lose either of them. The spring is in there. It's very, very fine. Easy to lose. One sneeze, and it's gone. So uh, be careful. You might want to have a little container of vinegar and plop this in there. Take this apart and plop it in there and have it... Uh, work on that while you attack this. Now this one you're probably going to need a little screwdriver and pry that rubber diaphragm out of there. Very highly engineered. You can see this has been in service for a while and um, it's got a lot of got a fair amount of calcium buildup which could uh, cause this to stick and and not feed. Um, the other thing could be, of course, that the strainer has uh, has clogged up. So you want to take this off. This is a three-quarter inch head. It's going to take a considerable amount of force to get this off. Um, the strainer's inside. You can also plop that in, um, in the vinegar, too, and um, get that cleaned up while you attack this. Um, I usually uh, dab this with... Uh, paper towel soaked in vinegar and uh, hit it with a toothbrush and uh, maybe a gentle scouring pad and scrape some of the uh, calcium build off off. Uh, this may not be viable. Uh, you can try soaking that in vinegar also, but uh, you probably want to replace this. Uh, this is very much like the uh, Fluid Master but it's definitely not the Fluid Master um, uh, Balcock uh, gasket. Works on the same principle, though. You probably want to get um, Dima's thing. Uh, basically, if you call up uh, the current owner of this valve, which is Robert Shaw, I believe, you pretty much get parts. We ain't got no parts. You don't need no parts. We ain't got to sell you no stinking parts. So, to hell with them. Uh, 
you want to go through DEMA. DEMA will um, not sell you the parts directly, but they will uh, direct you to um, somebody who will. Uh, that's uh, for you if you feel it's necessary. Uh, as you can see, the discs are, this one is by Dole, and this one is by, I guess, in-house. And uh, once this is cleaned off, I have used Dima's disc on the uh, S45, and um, it appears to work. So, um, although you have to do that on your own risk. Um, that way you don't have to disconnect this from the, uh, the plumbing. So the disc goes back on, our new disc. You've got that cleaned up. Uh, you've got the uh, spring and uh, plunger and the uh, cover. And that goes on. And then the bracket goes on there. Oops. Make sure that holes line up. And that goes on. And you want to just put that on loosely at first. Get the holes lined up. Get this together as fast as I possibly can for you. Appreciate your patience. You're watching this. I really do hope that this is a, a help to you. In figuring out getting those things apart. So you dog both of these down. Yep. And yep. Alright, so now this is really designed to be assembled quickly. This was snick, snick, snick. Now the uh, again, mind that screw. That goes on like this. There you go. Darn. Ah. Thank goodness for magnets. There you go. Let's see. Yeah, now go on like that. Let's get that in there. Yay. All right. And uh, lock that down. I don't know if I've got that lined up right, but that should work. And the electricals go on, one after the other. You also want to make sure that this is set to the right uh, setting there. The um, intern uh, internal instructions should tell you that. Although, this gets put back in that little hole there. And, whoop, let's see, put that in place and you bend this down and catch those two spade connectors like so. And line that up, wire it up. Uh, supply, return, and trigger. And she's back, should be back in operation, and she should feed. Now, you'd want to do that, particularly if the um, previous installer uh, seen these things put in with no manual bypass, and so there's no easy way to get water into the steam boiler unless you... Um, tear this thing apart or find alternate means of water but that's that's a possibility uh, just to show you in contrast uh, to the hydro level how easy it is to take this thing apart just pull the tabs off two sheet metal screws you don't even need to disconnect the electric uh, oops, there we go, this set comes right out, and you just got to remember to shut the water off, and one, two, three screws, and that thing is um, 
ready to come off and uh, you have factory approved rebuild parts for just about everything on here strainer cap what have you um, and you can put this valve back in operation uh, uh, pretty quickly uh, the also the other thing is even though these things are about the same price um, this thing has a uh, a unit which tells you the how often it's fed. Now the problem is with this one, of course, the reason why this one was taken offline is the uh, electronicals had failed. And you can see there, let's see if you can see the it's given all kinds of crazy numbers. Let's see if I can turn the light out there. Yeah, let me turn this light out. You can probably see the, the numbers a little better. Yeah, it's Apparently, what, what probably happened is someone tried to feed 120 volts into the circuit when it was uh, really only wanted 24 volts and uh, probably fried the, fried the little brain there. But uh, other than that, uh, these things are <laughs> pretty reliable, as well as these, to be, to be fair. These things are, they do what they, they do what they do. Um, the form factor on this one is a little bit uh, smaller, and um, it uh, can be mounted in a variety of positions uh, without looking like it was put in wrong. And uh, this does what it does, but of course I like the, um, the Hydro Level uh, product better. Any questions, please feel free to ask.